Hi, I'm Taylor and I'm a sophomore at Appalachian State University and I'm majoring in exercise science. And today I will be interviewing Gordon Burtis. Gordon is the vice president of sales at a manufacturing company that specializes in woodworking machines. Gordon is also a member of WMMA. WMMA stands for Wood Machinery Manufacturers of America. WMMA's mission is to enhance the competitive position improve the performance and advocate for domestic manufacturers of machinery, cutting tools, and supplies used in the process of wood and related products. Hello, Gordon. Hi, Taylor. How are you? How are you today? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Good. Glad to hear it. So I'm just going to ask you a few questions. The first one is, could you describe what your typical workday entails and what your first few years in this career were like? Sure. Be happy to. A uh, typical day for me um, starts at around 7 a.m. to uh, emails. I think most of, uh, most of us in our jobs have emails that we have to answer throughout the day, and I typically have 30 or 40 in the morning from distributors and international customers that need my attention. And then from there, it becomes our phones start ringing here at Taylor at about 8 a.m., and I'll... I've got a team of uh, eight or nine customer service reps that will all pick up the phone and do parts calls and ser answer service questions and answer sales calls, things of that nature, mm -hmm. right up until the end of the day. Um, the other parts of my job that, that uh, I take care of are organizing our installation team and our service team. So throughout the day, I'll be planning trips for uh, members of my team and organizing their schedules, uh, letting them know where they're going, things like that. I also have my own active sales territory, so throw that in on top and uh, <laughs> I'm answering emails and phone calls and writing quotes and hopefully, if I'm doing my job properly, closing some deals and making the company some money. Nice. Um, so to answer the second half of the question, Mm -hmm. The uh, first few years of my career started out in the factory, actually. One of the things that we do here at Taylor is try to get all of our office staff a certain amount of time in the factory learning how we build our machinery. We've got a, a specific way that we build uh, a, a high level of quality that we strive to achieve, and so to really sort of buy into that. We, uh, most of our team members, if not all, will do some, you know, portion of their, the beginning of their career in the factory. So mine was two and a half years or three years worth of time uh, running the punch press or the, the mm -hmm. scene wave and then assembling machines and sort of learning how we do it from the ground up. That seems like a very effective way to teach people. <laughs> well, you, you learn and, mm -hmm. um, and you really sort of buy into the fact that we make nice stuff we make yeah. stuff that works and, and you're confident in, especially in my role in, in sales, you're confident in telling people that it's good quality because you've built it all. So right. it goes a long way in making my job easier. What high school courses or college courses have you found to be the most applicable or important to your occupation now? Um, high school courses, probably not many. Um, I took some engineering courses in college uh, that were very helpful in understanding uh, materials and strength of metal and welds and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, uh, we have six engineers on staff here, all that have engineering degrees, something like that. That's an important part of what we do because we develop mm -hmm. all of our own machinery in-house. And so a, a good understanding of the basics on metals and materials and the strengths of various, you know, thicknesses of steel and stuff like that gives you a nice sort of uh, building block to building blocks to grow on here. So yeah. um, those classes were important. And uh, the classes that I wish I had taken uh, were business classes. So <laughs> it just sort of worked out that there wasn't enough time uh, in the four years to get too many of them. Yeah. Um, under my belt. So looking back, I wish I had done maybe a five-year MBA master's or something of that nature and had gone back to school right away because finding the time to do it now is, is tough. Yeah. 
what part-time jobs, apprenticeships, or internships, or any extracurricular activities would you best prepare you for this occupation? Um, for us, it's any job that you requires you to work with your hands. Um, the vast majority of what we do is a hands-on um, building of machines, servicing of machines, things like that. I landscaped growing up. Uh, I learned a good work ethic doing that. And then mm -hmm. we, as soon as, uh, as soon as you turn 18 years old, you can start operating heavy machinery. So mm -hmm. after I turned 18, I started here in the factory, uh, summer's home from college, winter breaks, stuff like that. So, and we've, um, since I've started, uh, introduced an internship program, both for, um, summer help in the factory, but also engineering interns. And so we've done our own in-house, you know, intern program where they get some hands-on experience learning how to design parts and build parts and, and all of that. So we, I was the first of that, you know, sort of 12 mm -hmm. years ago, and we've since continued it with, uh, with, with great success. That's very cool. Um, what are the benefits of being a member of WMMA? WMMA is a great opportunity to spend time networking with other people who build machinery here in the U.S. We, okay. all, we all have our, uh, our challenges with a more expensive labor market than the vast majority of the world. We've got our challenges with distribution, with uh, big companies that import machinery and try to um, sort of take over the market. And the WMMA will host a couple of events a year where we all get together and we have um, networking events and we have speakers and we have workshops and we have the opportunity to um, rub elbows with people in similar positions. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's valuable um, because we get to pool resources, we get to pool knowledge, we get to learn from each other, and we get to figure out how to best compete with, um, with the import market and then also to do a, a better job manufacturing for our customers. Um, the other thing is we also share a distribution network. There's, a, there's not too much overlap in our industry here with, with people who build similar mm -hmm. machines in the U.S., so we compare notes on distributors, and that, of course, you know, the end result of that is more sales, which keeps mm -hmm. us going. The next question kind of ties into that in asking, um, can you tell me about the networking or educational opportunities offered by WMMA? Sure. Um, there are a number of different committees that all have different, different goals. I'm part of two different committees, the membership committee, which is there to investigate and develop new members to try to bring them into the WMMA. And then I'm also um, part of the original next generation uh, group because I'm one of the young um, up and coming people in our, in, in our uh, association. Mm -hmm. And so with those two committees, there's always opportunities for webinars, for conference calls. Um, when you go to uh, exhibitions or you go to events, there are friendly faces that you get to spend time with, compare notes with. Certainly, there's quite a bit of behind-the-scenes talk about strategies going forward on, on where we're taking our companies. And certainly there's a few other uh, people in, in my exact position who are close to my age in up and coming companies where we spend a lot of time just figuring out how to do it. Mm -hmm. And um, the education side of it, I don't know all that much about. I do know the MMA has over the past couple of years spent a lot of time and resources in promoting some, uh, some, programs in high schools and specific programs for the woodworking industry to try to bring people in and teach them the skills to then go out and be woodworkers and be successful and, uh, and support their, you know, their members by buying machinery and, and hiring people and all that good stuff. So that's about the extent I know of the educational side. That was very cool. Um, what did you find most surprising about your career? <clears throat> 
Hmm. Hmm. Well, so Taylor is my family's business. So I grew up um, in and around everybody here. So there wasn't, there wasn't anything that uh, was too surprising. I think the one thing I'll put, I'll be able to put my finger on is, is how much I've enjoyed the traveling aspect of my job. Um, mm -hmm. I do a bunch of traveling. My sales territory is the Western third of the U S and I also work with our international customers and distributors. So I've gotten to see a decent percentage of the world and sell machinery and install machinery. So that I think was the most surprising thing was that I really do enjoy that. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it kind of looks daunting when you're 18 years old and sizing up where you think you fit in the company and, and, uh, and you're thinking, Oh boy, do I really want to get on an airplane for 20 hours and go to Australia? Well, the answer for me was yes. And, right. uh, and so that, I think that's probably the most surprising part. Sounds like a very fun part. It is. It is. Change of scenery is good. Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to add or think would help someone considering this occupation? Um, you know, yes, I have one comment that I make on a regular basis and the, the wood industry and the machinery manufacturing industry that correlates with the wood industry is one of the sort of most honest and down to earth industries you can be part of. All the people I get to deal with on a day in and day out basis are, they're nice, they're respectful, they're hardworking. And it, you really just, you get to know some really quality people. Mm -hmm. And so if I, if there's one overriding factor that I keep coming back to, it's the fact that the people that I get to, to network with and work with are just really, really quality people. That's awesome. Well, thank you very, very much for letting me ask you these questions and interview you today. And I greatly enjoyed getting to meet you. Pleasure for me as well, Taylor. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.